Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. I want to um, welcome everyone to our uh, weekly conference. We have a nice, uh, robust turnout today. Um, I, I don't doubt any reason why. Um, it's because we're going to hear um, uh, two presentations from uh, students in the program uh, who um, these two groups are two of the final four um, finalists um, at the AMIA meeting in a couple weeks in the student design challenge. And so it uh, certainly is a source of uh, a great pride for the faculty in the program that um, uh, the students have been uh, successful in doing this. And of course, I'm, I'm sure it's a great pride for, for them as well. Um, so, uh, as always, we are streaming this presentation. I just uh, tweeted out the um, link. And um, as always, if people uh, want to ask a question, they just uh, ask it with the hashtag DMiceConf. And someone, probably in this case me, will be monitoring uh, Twitter uh, during this talk. So, uh, why don't we just go ahead and get started. Our first uh, group presenting uh, consists of uh, Michelle Rybar, uh, Nelson Sanchez Pinto, Kate Boltz Hollis, Jean Wren, and Deb Woodcock. I assume that um, Nelson and Kate are probably listening, and I, I, I'm certain that Kate must be. <laughs> She'll let me know. Um, and um, uh, th then we'll hear a second from Ben uh, Cordier and Jason Lee. Um, another nice aspect of this is that. Um, well, actually, both of the projects have somewhat of a clinical orientation. One's a little more BCB-ish. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, I think it's um, Jean that's going to start. And the title of their presentation is Learning from the Data, Exploring a Hepatocellular Carcinoma Registry Using Visual Analytics to Improve Multidisciplinary Clinical Decision Making. So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jean Wren and um, I'm excited to be here to present to you our team project um, titled Learning from the Data, Exploring a Hepatocellular Carcinoma Registry Using Visual Analytics to Improve Clinical Decision Making. So our project uh, started with uh, a, case, a use case study with Dr. Scott Nogler's team. Um, their team is part of the hepatocellular carcinoma, treating patients uh, in a multidisciplinary uh, system. And so after meeting with Dr. Scott Nogler and getting his ideas about the needs that his team needs uh, to have a multidisciplinary tool to capture the critical data during their uh, tumor board conferences, uh, allowed us to come up with the our student challenge, which is to uh, be able to analyze the national uh, national hepatocellular carcinoma registry, and to be able to access that data in a very useful way and quick way that's applicable to the treatment process. Um, So current, the current situation is that uh, data tends to lo be uh, located regionally 
and not shared amongst the different uh, healthcare systems. And um, the guideline for hepatocellular carcinoma is not necessarily the, the most effective, even though it's a guideline that can be used. And, um, and the treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma is iteratively. And um, so we wanted to be able to uh, capture the process and the data in a meaningful way. And so uh, we did, uh, in addition to uh, Scott Nogler's multidisciplinary bioinformatics data tool, our tool will work alongside of that tool, um, pulling relevant data from the National Registry and using uh, data analytics and visualization to find meaning, meaning in this uh, data. So we, we, uh, we did uh, field interviews with the clinicians, and we also attended board meetings to see the actual uh, case scenarios of when they're in their tumor board meetings, what's going on, and where are, where are the data inefficiencies. And so um, a lot of times during the tumor board meetings, there's a lot of domain expertise, such as oncology, radiology, surgery, uh, pathology, and they all have their domain expertise, and they're giving their best advice on treating the patient, but the data is not being captured, and so um, hence the problem with not being able to aggregate the data for clinical decision making. Um, and so this diagram here is symbolic of uh, on the uh, on the right side is a lot of big data. On the other side, on the left side, is more or less a simpler form of the data analytics. But how can we combine the two into a meaningful way and applicable way to treat patient care? And so the diagram below is John's, the famous John Snow cholera outbreak. And he actually mapped the location of cholera and then found that cholera was from a certain well. And so, so the idea is that we can combine both the clinical data as well as the big data from hepatocellular carcinoma registry and make it meaningful for the clinicians, the, re the scientists, the people trying to find uh, use of this data. And uh, Michelle will give you guys a demo. Okay, so the problem that we were encountering when we started doing field interviews with clinicians is when we asked them what they needed um, and what they wanted for the data visualizations, they had a very difficult time sort of putting that into words or even envisioning what was possible. And, you know, what I keep falling back on is the famous Steve Jobs quote was that a lot of times people have a really hard time knowing what they want until you show it to them. So this is sort of the idea that we, that sort of spurred what we came up with. So we decided that instead of trying, us trying to create visualizations for the, the clinicians and just giving them to them, that really this is a much bigger process. And what we really need is community involvement and a platform that supports that type of community development. So we really need clinicians on the one hand, data visualization experts and informaticians on the other hand, to be able to come together in a community where they're often not located in the same place and both are busy and don't have a lot of time. So the idea we came up with was this website, which will serve as a repository for the visualizations that are developed, but also help support these visualizations before they're developed. So this is a place where, uh, hopefully this will work, I guess it's not working. Okay. All right. Here we go. Where did it go? Okay. There we go. 
So this is the website. And the idea is that we will collect these visualizations so that people can browse them, get ideas for new visualizations. And when they have a clinical question, um, they can post it to a discussion forum. The visualization experts can start responding, and they can start discussing ideas, brainstorming, brainstorming with other clinicians, and then coming up with a mock-up. Once you have a mock-up, then it can be posted here, and it will contain all sorts of information about the visualization, uh, not just the visualization itself. So it's the status, you know, where it's, it is in the process, who's created it, what the purpose is, um, any publications and evaluations that have been done with it, but also it now provides a place where you can directly comment on it uh, and not just in the forums. So just to give you an example of an initial visualization that we came up with what, um, in discussions with the uh, tumor board team here at OHSU was that they really wanted to be able to see a visualization where they could sort of define a patient cohort um, by characteristics of the patient. So these are represented by the filters up here and then be able to look at a certain number of treatments and figure out at this point which treatment you know, is best for this patient. So we can look here, we can see what our baseline is, what our cohort, how many you know, sort of match this. And then we can branch off into, for the first treatment, the different options. And we can see each of these cohorts, how big they are, you know, sort of what their 12-month survival is, quality of life, that kind of thing, their different lab um, results or, or scoring. Um, and then because treatment is iterative, we can continue this process um, and sort of see what happens when you start, you know, doing these successive treatments and seeing what happens to the cohorts. Um, so this was sort of, this is one example visualization. Another one is looking at labs over time. So this is also an interactive visualization. And the nice thing about having these visualizations on a website and having them be live, even though they, at this point, are only based on sample data, is that, you know, clinicians can actually play with them. So they can, you know, play with the graph. They can look at a particular lab value, look at the range that they want to, sort of see how that changes over time. You can see that this is a bunch of lab values over time and they can rearrange them if they want to see, you know, I want to see what happens to INR over six months for uh, this type of patient cohort, that kind of thing. And being able to interactively test it allows the clinicians then to give better feedback here and develop it and let it become something that is actually useful. I don't know why I can't present anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope this doesn't happen at Amy. Anyone have <laughs> do you have any suggestions? I'm not, yeah. Do you know? It's in a loop, yeah. Maybe unplug it. Okay. And then go to it. Or did it just, yeah, and then if we plug it in each. Okay, thanks. That's a helpful trick to know. Okay. Well, can I try projecting it now? Is it? Um, is it in full screen mode? Yeah. If we do this. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, 
Then also data visualization experts, if they come here and they start engaging with clinicians or have some ideas for visualizations, they can download their own, their own data as well. So the idea is that this website will support user-centered design in a way that allows the developers to have access to u busy users in an asynchronous way, but an easy way as well. So the idea is the clinician has a clinical question, posts it to the website, there's some discussion, there's some visualization development, and this is iterative. And eventually, once the visualization becomes mature enough, then it will be uh, tested in a real situation with real clinicians and real data. And um, once this is evaluated, it will be included in the MDBD tool that's being developed and can be used actually in conference for making uh, clinical decisions. Uh, at that point, though, we don't want to just stop there. We want to make sure that we're evaluating everything that we're doing and we're documenting it. So we want to make sure that we can evaluate the effect of the visualization on the clinical decision making. So there are tools out there that measure the level of, um, of how well clinical decisions are made in groups. And so that can be, we can use that tool before and after the visualization, using the visualization to see if it improves um, decision making. And also we can do evaluation later of a patient outcomes um, based, you know, after using these visualizations. And then we can, you know, sort of close the loop back to the clinical question to see if we've actually made improvement. So the potential impact of this is that, you know, unlocking this national data that hasn't been available before can really help enhance HCC treatment. Um, being able to see sort of different patterns that um, different organizations or institutions use across the country um, allows, you know, people to see a much broader view of how patients do. Um, they really can't do prospective studies on a lot of these uh, treatment sequences, like if you do this treatment followed by that treatment by that treatment. And so being able to have this sort of data and looking back at it retrospectively can help make better decisions for the future. Um, and this idea of creating um, visualizations that are custom designed for the clinicians themselves, so they have input in how they're created, uh, is something that they, uh, is very useful to them. And also this concept, there's nothing about it that says that it has to be focused only on uh, HCC. It could be extended to other cancers and diseases. Um, certainly, you know, they could be included in the website, you know, sort of start looking at the visualizations that are being done, seeing if they apply to different diseases or, you know, creating other similar websites that uh, are focused on a particular disease. So uh, as of now, six users have evaluated it and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, they really like the clinical engagement and the development of the visualizations. Um, and they stress that any feedback in this whole process of iterative development has to be very fast and easy because clinicians are very busy and don't have a lot of time. Um, but they were very excited about this idea of sort of making visualizations that they want for the data that they have and the clinical decisions that they need to be making. So our roadmap looking forward is, you know, right now we really need to start actually building the, the website, um, you know, developing it from its prototype. Uh, and one of the focuses of that will be creating a pilot visualization for the MDBD tool, which should be, de should be deployed um, the beginning of next year, end of next year, uh, or, or beginning, end of this year, beginning of next year. And sort of one of the ideas for this is that, you know, if we start getting a visualization in there sort of at the beginning, it can also be help entice the, the adoption and, um, you know, sort of the, you know, for its enticement for people to adopt the tool and to use it. So, um, and then of course we'll need to make sure that we're recruiting uh, members for the community, both clinicians and data visualization experts who can contribute and create more visualizations and possibly um, include other cancers and diseases as well. So uh, giving clinicians access to HCC registry data about patients that hasn't been accessible before is really an, um, an exciting thing for these clinicians and they think will really help improve clinical decision making. Data visualizations will have, a tr have tremendous potential for impacting this process, and the hope is it'll create a very rapid learning environment um, for this type of treatment. And um, it's something that requires community participation and effort to succeed, but we think that it's something that people will be pretty excited and motivated to uh, participate in. 
So just to acknowledge, uh, Dr. Scott Nogler is the um, sort of mastermind behind the MDBD tool and is the person who really helped guide our development of this and ideas of how visualizations can be used for this data and how we actually create visualizations. Um, the OHSU HCC Tumor Board who let us sit in and um, the development team and then all the different um, clinicians that we talked to here at OHSU and of course um, DMICE for the support. Any questions? Actually, I don't, I don't have a question, but, um, well, it, a sort of process question. Um, I, I actually realized as you were talking, I didn't um, ask you about the time. How, how, how long are you given to present? Is it like 15 minutes? I think it's or? 20 total, including Q&A, and I think it might be 15. Yeah. Okay, so you were timing it? Oh, okay, yeah. great. Um, yeah. I, um, and, and also, um, one of your co-presenters tweeted in, um, mm -hmm. looks great so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then a second, computer stalling, good for practice. Visuals make you stop and think how the information looks and can help you make decisions. So hopefully that won't happen uh, in San Francisco. Oh, this is Dr. Scott Nogler, the... Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, two comments. Um, one is, if, if this is, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the audience is. I'm sure it's not people like me, but um, kind of more bioinformatics. But it might be helpful if um, you even do just a little run-through of one patient. Okay. Um, when you're doing that kind of thing, because I think it... Um, it, it might make more sense that way or, or just be more intuitive, that would be one comment. The second, this is just a comment, um, we're developing the tool. Um, just two weeks ago, I talked to a team from GE, the big GE. They, they make many, many things, a huge company. Amongst them are scanners like MRIs and CAT scans. And they're trying to develop the tool. And I just tell you, this is, this is very, very cutting edge, and people are nipping at your and our heels. Um, and uh, they, they have things that we don't have, like tons of resources, but they don't have things that we do have, like, you know, um, av availability of clinicians and kind of the academic environment. So I just I want to encourage you to keep going and just say this is, it's, it's, whether this seems like it's a great idea or not, other people have had it. It is a great idea, and it's certainly going to be expanding nationwide. Great. Thank you. Uh, just to reiterate some of that, um, so I'm Jim Morrison, interventional radiologist, and uh, we deal with these hepatocellular carcinoma patients all the time. And I kid you not, in the last month, I've had discussions in addition to the GE people about doing exactly that tool. So I'm jealous because you beat me to the punch. <laughs> um, but this is a tremendous project. And um, and yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to help out. Um, I know you said in the future you're going to be looking for clinicians to be involved. So this okay. is this is really cool. Great. Yeah, we, we really want involvement um, from anyone who's interested from the clinician side, informatician side, data, um, data visualization side. Yeah. Um, That's a good question. <laughs> uh, one of the, and, and Scott, since he's here, could probably answer this a little bit better than I can, but one of the things that is important with um, the data collection is that it's done in a very structured way because uh, the data that we have now in the EHR is not, and so it's very difficult to um, analyze or do anything with. So that's part of this MDBT tool is creating data input uh, facilities that make it so that it's very structured, very regular, and that the data hopefully will be gathered um, well. That doesn't mean, of course, that someone can't make a mistake and, and choose the wrong option. But the, the workflow will be that the nurse would be in charge of getting the data collected about the patients before the tumor board. And initially, that means the nurse is actually going to be entering it herself. 
Eventually, there's probably going to be um, facilities for grabbing it from the EHR, but even if that were the case, the nurse would be reviewing all of the cases before the tumor board. And then the tools used in the tumor board meeting to present the patient, so it's another opportunity to see the data and hopefully, you know, catch any errors, record any treatment decisions, any outcomes from discussions, and then that data gets um, stored locally and then eventually de-identified and sent back to the uh, national registry. So we're hoping that there's opportunities to catch any errors as they, the process is, uh, it goes on. Actually, a question from the Twitter sphere. <clears throat> um, how much do you think the visualization, visualization process will cost in the long run? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, what do you think, Deb? <laughs> You're more on the business management side. I don't know. I think we need to do quite a bit of work in order to, to determine that. You know, part of this uh, goal, and, and, you know, from my perspective, is it would be nice to, you know, have this be sort of, you know, community involvement, have it be open source, have the visualizations developed and be available. Um, obviously, they're being created to be included in this tool, and so you, you know, if you're using, if you're trying to do it for HCC, you would need the tool to eventually use the visualization in real time. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't have open source versions of the visualizations that would be available to adapt to other diseases and for anyone else's data that, that they have. So. You know, the hope is, you know, if we can create sort of an open source environment where people are willing to contribute, but obviously that still is some sort of, involves some sort of money and support. Yeah, yeah or, or, right. or, I mean, it, and it's conceivable, you'd have to do things like clinical trials, but if this right. actually would lead to more cost-effective care, then, you know, it could actually pay for itself that way. Right, right. Um, Nathan, I think, was going um, I guess along those lines, I guess this is more of a comment. Would it make sense to set up some kind of bounty system or community funding system so that, you know, if someone really wants a visualization, they can all pitch in some money for the development time? That's, yeah, yeah. It's sort of, we, I thought of the idea of crowdsourcing the ideas, but crowdsourcing the funding is certainly <laughs> a good one as well. Um. Um, <clears throat> the clinical data that you get that your that your clinical expert enters, I wasn't quite clear on the format of it, but are you using any tools like the disease ontology to make sure that the data you enter isn't just in your HCC silo but can be used in other forms of the patient's treatment and you know you can use the the power of semantic semantically enabled tools to make your data more useful. Um, uh, that's a really good question. Um, do you, Scott, do you know if that's part of the development? Well, okay, so I, I can address two kinds of things. Um, first thing is the fidelity of the data, which is actually a great question, and um, I, I've been, you know, pitching this idea or similar for at least six years, and all computer people, the first thing they say is, how do you ensure the fidelity of the data? And, um, and most people would like to connect these tools with the me electronic medical record, okay? And I have been extremely resistant to that idea, um, not because it isn't a great idea, which it is. It just takes a lot of resources, and um, I, I, the, the power of this kind of tool is that it's done at many centers nationally, all of which may have different medical records, mm -hmm. and this, this creates difficulty. So I think ultimately, connecting it to the medical record is a great idea, but initially it's it's very difficult. And that's the same kind of answer to your question. I mean, there's going to be all this captured data, which is going to be very robust for this condition. And could you integrate it with other, you know, healthcare stuff? And uh, I, I, th I, I would love that. Um, I, I would love it if we could integrate with kind of our other medical records. But I, I just, for me, because I'm not GE with unlimited resources, um, we just got to start somewhere, and so we're just starting on the, this. Yeah, that's, that's and I want to say one more thing. <coughs> yeah. So this is this is like specific for this liver cancer thing, and, and it's very good. This need is across many diseases, especially cancers, and there's super opportunities um, because um, all the cancers have these kind of boards, but they have different specific data needs. And for example, we, we are not dependent on genetic data. I, I, it, this liver cancer has really not evolved to the point where genetic data is useful.
full all the time. But if you go to other cancers like leukemia, they're using genetic data every single day. It's very complicated, and it needs to be incorporated into exactly this same exact kind of thing with just little tweaks, but the overall idea is the same. You know, but anyways, my, my point is that the genetic data just has to be in there for clinical use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to add, if, you, if you're going to employ a human to add terms or input data, you might as well use, um, you know, structured, structured terms so that your information be, can, can be connected to other forms of data. It doesn't require any more resources. Right, right. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure we can go on and um, the team will stick around. Um, so we, if we can have the um, um, the next team come up, a actually, I, I would uh, I would answer the the last question is is that um, all of the brilliant students in this room will create the future interoperable data and EHR systems that will allow us to easily push the data in. But we're not quite there yet. Um, we still need for meaningful use to figure the rest of that out. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, while these folks are slowly <laughs> uh, getting set up here, um, I guess I can uh, introduce their um, title. So I've, I've already uh, uh, introduced, oh, actually, I, I, I guess it's Ben and Jason presenting. It's a larger team here, Ashley Choi, Ben Cordier, Pernar Das, and Jason Lee. And um, they're the second of the two teams that are among the uh, final four uh, at the AMIA meeting. And the title of their uh, talk is, their presentation is Take a Breather, Empowering Adherence and Patient-Centered Research Through Interactive Data Visualization, Social Engagement, and Gamification in Patients with Sleep Apnea. for that introduction. Um, I'm Jason Lee, and um, this is Ben Courier. And um, <clears throat> before we get started, um, no commercial interests or financial conflicts of interest. Um, sleep apnea is a disease that affects 25 million Americans, and 80% um, can go uh, undiagnosed. And it's characterized by frequent cessations of breathing at night. So um, people often wake up up to hundreds of times a night, um, gasping for breath or choking. And um, they also, um, because they're waking up, um, they're sleepy during the day, which leads to um, decreased cognitive function, memory loss, attention deficit, um, and depression. And they have also um, increased risk for uh, hypertension and heart attack and um, obesity and diabetes. So the gold standard treatment for sleep apnea is CPAP. Um, or continuous positive airway pressure. And it's basically the patient wears a mask when he or she goes to sleep, and it's connected by a hose to this small machine that blows air into their airway to keep it open. Um, also, uh, uh, since it's comorbid with obesity, uh, weight loss is a very effective treatment. And so these changes are basically very simple behavior modifications. But we have found that uh, c c patient compliance is surprisingly low. Um, we found that about 46% uh, um, of patients comply with their CPAP adherence, uh, CPAP 
treatment um, regularly. So the, the student design challenge was meant for um, to engage people with their data and we sought to um, focus on the challenge of patient engagement with their data. So um, with long-term therapy like um, cancer treatment or sleep apnea treatment, um, patients often have inconsistent health improvement or um, it's unnoticeable. They don't see the long-term trend. And so they get discouraged and um, uh, may, may stop their treatment or not adhere to their, their doctor's orders. Also, um, patients may feel all alone in their treatment, even if they have a strong family support system. Um, they're the only ones who are actually going through the disease, and this leads to feelings of isolation. And so um, poor adherence leads to um, negative health outcomes. This project was a collaboration between um, us and um, myapnea.org, and we, uh, we uh, were connected through an OHSU faculty, Dr. Boudreau, um, um, who had worked with them uh, at Harvard. And this group um, is funded by uh, PCORI, the patient-centered uh, Outcomes Research Institute, which seeks to um, uh, make um, patients more informed so they make informed decisions about their health care. Um, and the MyApnea's um, mission, uh, MyApnea is a resource for learning about sleep apnea, um, they have a um, uh, forum where patients can suggest their research direction for sleep apnea and connect with each other. And they're trying to expand their website and it's constantly uh, growing and evolving. And um, also sleep apnea is a natural case for, uh, use case for um, what we're trying to do because um, it's a chronic um, disease, and um, they're collecting all this data from their CPAP machine and um, monitoring uh, sleep, and um, they're, they're not engaging with it. So we wanted to um, find a way to make this uh, data more um, engageable. Um, so our desired solution was to make an app that um, allowed um, patients to increase their understanding of their own health um, through interactive data visual visualization. So the patient um, can set their own personal health goals, such as a target weight, and they'll earn achievements, um, like in a game, for um, reaching these um, targets. Um, also, um, there could be a social, um, social module where um, uh, the patient can um, connect with others um, through social media. And ideally, the data collection for this app would be um, continuous and automated. And we wanted to make this modular so that we could continually um, add new features. And so the concept, the con concept um, we came up with was a modular dashboard web app for personal health and treatment tracking. Um, that would uh, increase these, uh, the patient understanding. 
and we started off with three modules, um, data collection, interactive data visualization, and gamification. And um, we came up with a working prototype that uh, Ben here will explain to you. So the first module I want to share with you guys is the data collection module. And this is pretty standard web form. Um, and what this would do, would it would collect weight data, blood pressure, heart rate, um, and other sleep quality measures, such as how long a patient used their CPAP for the night before, um, their daytime sleepiness the next day, and the perceived sleep quality. So this is all fairly standard data that is often used in a, the treatment of sleep apnea. Once this data is in the system, it would be used to power a gamification module. And the gamification module would first have um, standard goals that would drive the patients towards achieving certain health outcomes. Um, some of these medals they could get would be a data dignitary for consistent um, data entry, um, for a survey samurai <laughs> uh, medal for um, filling out surveys on my apnea. They have a number of long-term um, engagement surveys uh, that they have been using for some while. Um, forum friend for responding to um, user posts on forums, and then also a thought leader medal that um, would allow them to essentially gain clout through posting research questions in a rank the research tool posted on my apnea. The more upvotes they receive, the more um, clout they get until they start achieving medals of the status. And the levels are broken up into gold, silver, and bronze. Um, in addition to these standard medals, um, a more robust version of this module would also include the ability to set your own goals. And that way, you could really personalize this module and um, allow patients to really set their own health goals and better their own health. And all this, in addition to the gamification module, this would all be used to power a data visualization module. And this data visualization module would allow you to filter through the data collected and um, pan and zoom and engage with finer time points. And as you mouse over these data points, you would get a tooltip that gives you a more granular explanation of the data for a specific day. Um, and I actually have a um, live version right here that I can share. And it looks like, let's minimize this a bit. But as you can see, you can add in different filters. Um, that's blood pressure and weight right here. And then you can mouse over, and you can zoom in too. But it seems to be wanting to scroll. You can also pan. Um, and then this is the very standard input module, and then the gamification module, which doesn't seem to like the current dimensions of the screen. Mm. So all this would be in a modular um, software design that would allow for the dashboard to be extended to the future. Um, this would allow for the integration of mobile and wearable technologies as they are um, used more by the general population and members of the community. And it would also allow for the integration of medical devices um, as their data streams become available too. Currently, this is a front-end prototype, but when it does become integrated, it would be integrated on the MyApnea web server, and this integration would actually, it would be using the same REST API and database as a, the Apple Health Kit uh, app that is currently under, develop, under development by MyApnea, in addition to any other wearable apps that they would develop in the future. By integrating all this, we would then have mobile and wearable data streams made available to the dashboard, and we could build out future modules that allow users to explore their mobile health data um, through the web application. 
So once we came up with this concept and built the prototype, we shared it with the team at MyApnea, specifically the a leader of the patient engagement panel, uh, two members of the steering committee, and we were iterating with one of the developers. And from this sharing and collaboration, um, we found recommendations for additional modules um, and also um, discussed further integrating the HealthKit app and wearables. Um, we also got some really valuable feedback from a sleep physician who um, encouraged the use of more metrics to contextualize the ones we were currently gathering and to also use more validated metrics such as the Stanford sleepiness scale. And so these would be things to extend this dashboard prototype to in the future. So future directions would include the integration with the MyApnea server and make use, making use of their REST API. Um, the integration, and from this integration really tapping into those wearable sensors and data feeds. And uh, also the developers at MyApnea are currently using a software or exploring the use of a software called Sleepyhead which normalizes CPAP data between manufacturers and brands um, and their different devices. And from this normalization, Sleepyhead allows for a data visualization. So using that technology, it would be great to um, be able to visualize CPAP data directly from one of these modules. In addition, a refinement of the metrics and the inclusion of more objective validated data would really um, take this to the next level. So I'd also like to give many thanks to the team members, um, the people at MyApnea, our advisors, Aish Pedro and Shannon McQueenie, and additional thank yous to OHSU DMICE, Amia, and of course Deb, who provided us some great feedback and information on the Amia Design Challenge. Cool. Thank you. Any questions? I actually have one from the Twitterverse. Mm -hmm. What if patients don't like games? <laughs> Um, that's entirely possible. Um, I think that, you know, we're not really tapping into games as much as um, this gamification psychological research, which shows that if you put a progress bar somewhere, people are really likely to do those, achieve the milestones that they need to to fill that progress bar. Um, if you have a LinkedIn, you may see that they put how far you can go to improve your profile. Are you an expert yet? Um, and so that sort of psychology is really what we're trying to tap into to encourage people to adhere to their treatments and to really engage with myapnea.org. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, when it comes to the data collection, our current input module was really something made for the <laughs> prototype. Um, I think ideally an input module would be the fallback. Um, we would ideally like to be getting data streams directly from mobile devices. That said, there is still valuable information you can get from input modules and the data we were collecting was blood pressure, heart rate, um, and BMI, which can actually inform a lot of the risk factors for myapnea. Or, sorry, sleep apnea. And also, like, um, a lot of the data was um, actually survey data, like, um, mm -hmm. like how, yeah. how sleepy do you feel, basically. So, um, so you could assess that with the Stanford sleepiness scale. Um, so it's, um, it's subjective, but um, quantified. And uh, something I also um, actually didn't point out is that um, this data visualization, in its current iteration, it's really um, it's on it's a user's view of their data. But the ideal implementation would actually make heavy use of social integration, so allowing a user to compare their data and averages by site-wide averages, and then also um, being able to share the badges they achieve in the gamification module across social media, such as Twitter and Facebook and things like that. Yes? So, uh, blood pressure, the heart rate, and uh, the weight, seems like the two connected things. 
Our, our hope is that um, essentially the, uh, these patients are often on treatment plans that encourage the reduction of weight and exercising because these are known to alleviate a lot of the symptoms of sleep apnea. Now, assuming they are following these treatment plans, um, the hope is that they would be able to see the benefits through these visualizations by having an improved heart rate, lower blood pressure, and um, a decreasing BMI over time. So it's really their, their continuous um, inputting of the data and engagement with this dashboard would allow them to gain some of that insight into their own health and uh, really see where they've come from and where they're heading. Um, yeah, that's, that's not something we've explored yet. Um, we've been focused on the sleep apnea use case, but uh, I think this, given that there probably is a PCORI diabetes website, I'm, I'm actually not sure, but there's quite a few of them out there right now. Um, this is something that could definitely be extended across patient sites. Um, and with <laughs> All right. Um, so my question is, there are some other apps out there that give some kind of feedback about sleep. So that I know some of them are on the iPhone. Does this, would this tool potentially pick up information about that? Or you would be able to visualize those data too? So it certainly could. That's part of the modularity of the design. Our hope is that um, if someone essentially requests that we allow them to integrate a certain app that we could build out a module to do that if it doesn't already exist. Um, my understanding is that the HealthKit app will also have similar features. So it's possible that we could encourage users to migrate over to that to get more into involved with the MyApnea community, but um, it's definitely something to explore. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's 
That's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.